Hey YouTube, it's ACU, and welcome to the 227th episode of Best Tech Info and Rumors. Now with the jailbreak having been patched some time ago and iOS 8.3 and the brand new Apple Watch's release and with 8.4 in its second round of developer testing, what do we have to look forward to in 2015? Now there are a few things, the most prominent of which being the next jailbreak. So let's go ahead and discuss that first. But before we get into it, if you're interested in winning a brand new Apple Watch of your own, be sure to rate this video up and stick around until the end for complete instructions on how to enter my brand new giveaway. Away. And with that said, let's talk about jailbreaking. Now, I'm not going to go over everything that's happened from when Apple patched the Taiji jailbreak with 8.1.3 until now. So if you want more information and you want to get caught up, be sure to look below in the more info. I'll have some links for you guys there. And then once you're up to date, you can come back to this video. So there isn't currently a new jailbreak. The latest one supports iOS 8.1.2 and 8.2 betas 1 and 2, and that's it. However, since I last recorded for this series, Ionic, a quantum contributor to the jailbreak scene, released a video demonstrating that he can successfully jailbreak iOS 8.4 beta 1, which is the current latest beta's predecessor. However, he's not going to release it. It. He's done this before. Last year, prior to Pangu for 7.1.1 and 7.1.2, he released a comparable video demonstrating what he called his cyber elevator jailbreak for 7.1.1, which was the latest firmware at the time. And then nothing ever came of it, except he did unwillingly and unknowingly contribute to the creation of the first Pangu jailbreak. And for information on that, as well as how it's possible, be sure to look below for my video coverage on the latest iOS 8.4 beta one untethered jailbreak video from the hacker. So don't bank on Ionic. And I just wanted to state that he's in no way a reflection of either Taiji or Pangu. They're two separate teams who are legitimate and will contribute to the jailbreak scene. So with that said, what's next for jailbreaking if we can't count on Ionic? Well, Taiji and Pangu are faced with an interesting situation. They can either really do one of two different things. First, they can jailbreak iOS 8.3 or they can jailbreak iOS 8.4. Now let's kind of examine that for a second and break down each of these two different options. First, if they were to jailbreak 8.3, hypothetically speaking, let's say they release a new utility tomorrow, then and Apple would be able to patch that jailbreak with the release of iOS 8.4, especially seeing as 8.4 is in its second round of developer beta testing and it strictly addresses the music app. It basically revamps it and corrects some minor complications with it. So it's possible that this could be the last beta release. We just don't know for sure. And 8.4 could be available to the public this Monday, a week from Monday, two weeks, we simply don't know. The ideal moment for either team to have released a jailbreak for 8.3 would have been quickly following its release, but neither were ready at the time, especially Pangu, who we now know didn't even get the chance to test the vulnerabilities they've been saving up until this point until after 8.3's release due to complications with Ionic. Now, let's talk about 8.4. If they jailbreak 8.4, what's to stop Apple from releasing something like 8.5? Because I know that's a question that a lot of you are going to have. Well, we knew Apple was going to reach as high as iOS 8.4 for some time due to rumors that accurately predicted a number of previous iOS 8 updates. And we don't have any such rumors for iOS 8.5, which is a good thing. It means Apple will likely get as far as iOS 8.5 before iOS 9 is available, excluding any potential 8.4.x updates such as 8.4.1. And what Taiji and Pangu are likely banking on is a similar situation to what we had last year, where Apple patched the jailbreak and then Pangu came onto the scene, Apple released 7.1.2 and didn't patch the vulnerabilities and we were able to jailbreak the latest public iOS 7 firmware until iOS 8's release. And you can even still do so, seeing as 7.1.2 7.1.2 is the latest version of iOS 7 and it's fully jailbreakable 
by Pangu. So both groups are likely hoping that a similar scenario will happen this time with 8.4 being the latest major iOS 8 release prior to iOS 9 and hoping that if they release a new jailbreak for 8.4 that Apple won't correct the vulnerabilities until iOS 9. But will that happen? We just don't know. Either way, they're definitely going to gamble. But if we look back at last year as a reference point, nobody thought that they were going to be able to jailbreak 7.1.1, let alone 7.1.2 until Pangu rushed onto the scene with their tool in June. So we still have a ways to go until Pangu is even a year old, and we have even further to go until iOS 9 this fall. And right now, both teams are in development stealth mode, so to speak, meaning they aren't giving ETAs or updates, and that happens after every single jailbreak patch until the next utility is released. Developers simply don't like giving ETAs for the sole fact that those who are impatient will quickly turn toxic and complain about receiving free jailbreaks that take so much time to create and test. We are going to get a new jailbreak. It's simply a matter of time. I'll keep you guys updated along the way. So that's pretty much where we stand right now. The developers are likely banking on a similar situation as last year's iOS 7.1.1 and 7.1.2. So what else do we have to look forward to in 2015? Well, there's the next iPhone, which will likely be released in the fall, probably the iPhone 6s and the iPhone 6s plus Apple's minor and incremental iPhone upgrades. So while everything you hear right now pertaining to the next devices are simply based on rumors and speculation, we can definitely expect things like a processor bump, camera improvements, and finally two gigabytes of RAM, which we first saw in the iPad Air 2. But what about something extra? With each S model, Apple likes to include something to provide incentive for those to update. So with the iPhone 3GS, we received speed. With the iPhone 4S, Siri. 5S security with the Touch ID scanner, but what about the 6S? Well, it could stand for Sapphire this time around. With the iPhone 6, it was rumored to sport a Sapphire Crystal display cover. However, Apple had complications with yield, and they simply weren't able to meet that expectation. But who knows, they might have even been saving it for the 6S and 6S Plus from the beginning. Right now, it's just a theory, but we could receive a comparable Sapphire Crystal display cover on the 6S and 6S Plus as what we see on the Apple Watch and the Apple Watch Edition. And it would definitely be really awesome to have an iPhone that's basically scratch-proof and doesn't require screen protectors. Don't you think? Let me know down below in the comments section. And beyond that, we could see a new iPad. Not an iPad Air or an iPad Mini, but an entirely new version, an iPad Pro. The device has been rumored for some time, a 12-inch iPad, but will it actually happen? Right now, nothing can be confirmed, but again, rumors have made their rounds throughout the Apple blogosphere for well over a year now, and today, new industrial renderings were made available that highlight a 12.9-inch display, an absolutely massive iPad. And if such a device were released, it would likely be alongside the 7.9-inch and 9 7.7 inch iPad models, which will follow the iPhone 6 and the iPhone 6s probably sometime in October. But what about even sooner than that? What can we expect in 2015? Well, iOS 9. It will be unveiled in June at Apple's annual WWDC or Worldwide Developers Conference. And from iOS 9, it's expected to be the OS 10 Snow Leopard equivalent to iOS, essentially meaning it will probably be mostly focused on performance improvements. That's not to say it won't include new features, however, and we can probably expect additional customization options and new APIs for developers, as Apple is starting a new trend with allowing them access to things like the system keyboard and Touch ID APIs in iOS 8. And hopefully that trend will continue and we'll see even more customization available in iOS 9. And quickly looping back to jailbreaking, before we go over the videos that I've released since the last episode, I had to update to iOS 8.3 to use the Apple Watch because of course 8.2 is the latest firmware that includes integration for the device. And I created a video on how to properly update to iOS 8.3 while preserving your future ability to jailbreak because believe it or not, there's actually a wrong way to update. So if you're interested in that and you're getting an Apple Watch as well, I highly recommend watching through that video. And then also prior to that, I actually discussed Ionic and his new iOS 8.4 jailbreak and kind of dispelled some things as well as went into 
what we can expect and how Ionic unknowingly and unwillingly contributed to the creation of the original Pangu jailbreak. Next, I reviewed the new 12 inch 2015 MacBook and did a gaming demonstration on it. And if you want to earn paid apps from Apple's App Store for free legally while supporting the developers of said apps, watch my dedicated coverage on free apps fast where I announce the winner to my recent iPhone 6 giveaway and announce my new Apple Watch giveaway. And speaking of, I also unboxed the Apple Watch for you guys, just the Apple Watch with the sapphire crystal display cover, the stainless steel version with the Milanese loop, and I compared that one against the 38 millimeter sports collection. And if you want to see some of the coolest apps currently available for the Apple Watch, I created a top apps video. And then finally, I discussed iOS 8.4 beta 2 and jailbreaking and kind of provided some additional details on the situation that we're in now that I recommend watching if you have yet to. So that's everything I wanted to discuss in this week's episode. And if you guys want to win a brand new Apple Watch, be sure to navigate to freeappsfast.com inside of Mobile Safari, sign up, then come back here or to any of my recent videos and rate them up and leave a relevant comment down below in the comment section containing your referral code, which is actually the piece that appears in the fourth tab at the bottom after the equals symbol itself. And include something else in your comments so it doesn't get flagged as spam. If you want to be updated more often, such as when I release new videos similar to this one, as well as covering things things like jailbreaking and the Apple Watch. Be sure to like me on Facebook, follow me on Twitter, add me one of your circles inside of Google+, follow me on Instagram at ICUID, and subscribe to my secondary YouTube channel at youtube.com forward slash ICUID. And until next time, this is ICU signing out.